Uh, this is Powerline's first web interview, and we are very happy uh, to kick it off uh, with uh, Mr. Claudio Fakin, who is president, uh, Power Grids Division, uh, ABB. Uh, and with me is uh, Nandita Kochar, uh, who is uh, uh, editor uh, for Powerline magazine. First question is, uh, what are the big changes that you're seeing in electricity sector or <coughs> specifically uh, in the grids uh, worldwide? In, in, uh, as, as, as everybody knows, we, we're, we're going through uh, what, is, what is called uh, uh, energy transition or even energy revolution, someone called it. Uh, but it's definitely um, time for big changes in this, uh, in this space. And uh, what we see is that it's, uh, first of all, it's very much driven by the um, strong uh, penetration of renewables. Uh, that's certainly one of the main drivers. And what that does, obviously, is to um, create uh, uh, a number of uh, challenges in the grid uh, that were not really there before. And uh, this trend is going to continue. The, the renewable uh, piece is, is foreseen to be 40% uh, of the overall uh, energy uh, uh, provision by 2035. Um, and uh, on top of that, uh, there is also a clear trend of uh, leveraging more going forward the electricity as a main source of uh, energy. And uh, obviously with you know, the trends on urbanization, uh, electrification of infrastructure, uh, for instance, the whole uh, electrical vehicle uh, trends uh, will generate uh, different also patterns of demand in that uh, electrical system. So there is a big uh, change going on, both in terms of supply, the generation sources being different, but also in terms of consumption, being the consumption patterns uh, uh, much different than before. Uh, the other aspect is that the overall grid uh, starts to be more complex in the sense of how it gets managed. Uh, in the past, it was a very simple, in brackets, uh, power generation down, uh, energy flowing down to the consumer. Today, it's, uh, it's a two ways. Uh, you have uh, all these so-called prosumers, uh, you have your rooftop uh, solar PV, you generate energy, you want to put some of that back into the, into the grid, how to manage that, and then you have uh, uh, not anymore a few hundreds of points of uh, generation, but a few thousands or a few uh, tens of thousands of points of generation that need to be managed. With all that, what comes in is obviously the dimension of uh, the digitalization. Because there is no doubt that there is a, a need in order to manage this complexity to deal with the data as much as we deal with the uh, electrons. So all of that together creates a much more complex environment from a transmission and distribution perspective. And all those elements are basically what we are looking at from a technology uh, uh, perspective in order to make sure that that um, electricity uh, remains uh, uh, reliable, affordable, and stable. So you talked about uh, the challenges. Uh, you talked about the fact that we are moving towards uh, a more digital network. and. What are the technologies that you feel are best suited to meet the new challenges? The technologies that you feel uh, are most promising and, and also most relevant. It's a very important question. Um, first of all, uh, let me give you the perspective on, on how we see uh, the grid evolving. And uh, there are a few key trends that uh, the need to be uh, taken into account. Number one is the one that is most visible to everybody, which is the overall distributed energy resources space. Uh, the landscape with uh, solar PV panels that we mentioned before and so on and so forth, uh, the hundreds of thousands of uh, consumers and uh, producers. So that space is definitely uh, creating, is growing and is creating new challenges for that grid. But as important, uh, we see a very strong trend also in the renewable space because of the competitiveness um, of, of the technology now, both on the wind as well as on the solar, uh, the generation in bulk, so what we call utility scale solar or wind farms, 
and uh, that requires also uh, more investments in transmission because usually the bulk uh, uh, large scale uh, solar plants are far away from the where the consumption is so you need infrastructure to transmit uh, in a reliable way that that energy so those both those trends are developing and are needed in order to support this uh, this grid uh, then you have technologies that are not really new from a utility uh, perspective, but they, they take a much more relevant um, position in the, the grid, which is uh, uh, power quality technology. Um, within that, we see, for instance, uh, what we call fax flexible AC uh, transmission systems that uh, uh, allow to uh, transmit uh, more active power in existing AC lines, for instance, or that allows to uh, filter and uh, manage the power flow in terms of reactive and active when you have uh, points of consumption like uh, large factories, uh, steel mills, and so on, that generate harmonics and things like that. Uh, the energy storage is another uh, important element that comes in uh, to play. Uh, again, it's nothing really new. Uh, we've been uh, providing energy storage also through, for instance, uh, hydro pump stations for, for decades. Uh, battery storage, we have uh, also uh, many references there. But this comes uh, now very much at the center of what needs to be done in order to manage with the uh, fluctuation uh, of, the, of the renewable uh, aspect. And then again, uh, the whole space of uh, the digital, be it digital substation, be it uh, digital grid, uh, where control centers, uh, the SCADA systems, the EMS, uh, need to be um, much more interconnected and integrating uh, a number of functionalities that allow the customers to improve and optimize um, the design, the planning of the grids, obviously optimizing how that grid gets upgraded, built, and more important even the overall operation and maintenance uh, optimization. And there are uh, software tools, applications that help uh, our customers in, for instance, improving the process of how to manage the assets, uh, how to predict maintenance activities rather than react on maintenance activities, and optimizing the workforce with uh, workforce planning. Uh, we hear, hear about uh, supergrids and we hear about microgrids. Uh, so tell us how they fit into the new evolving grid. Absolutely. It's, it's, um, we have a very clear view on that one and, and uh, uh, we see the need of both uh, to be developed further. Uh, both aspects uh, are not only important but also necessary to manage the new complexity and the changes that we see in, uh, in the grid. Certainly the distributed part, uh, microgrid is one aspect of it and uh, because you have this distributed environment, uh, you also want to make sure that you um, take the learnings from reliability that you have on the transmission and I apply those in the distribution uh, area and uh, try to provide reliable energy also, for instance, to remote uh, uh, places, islands or villages that are um, not close to um, uh, points of generation. Now, what makes all that even more interesting and exciting is the fact that with the uh, competitiveness now of the renewable uh, piece with uh, you know solar being almost at parity in many places or even wind, uh, that you can start using uh, that energy source and instead of uh, running diesel 24-7, you would only need uh, diesel as a backup or actually you don't even need that one anymore because you have battery storage that comes in and compensates. So that's one aspect, but as I mentioned before, um, the next level is to develop uh, large-scale renewable. And uh, it is obvious that when you do that at scale, uh, you are much more efficient in terms of uh, production, in terms of efficiency of building uh, the, the, the wind farms or, or, the, or the solar farms. And all that then again requires uh, transmission capacity because the, um, usually these locations are far away, are new places, and uh, the transmission uh, infrastructure is not present in those, in those cases. So those trends are definitely uh, going to be here for the long term to support the, the future of the grid. Uh, 
as we move towards a more digital network, uh, what are the concerns or what are the risks uh, that utilities uh, should worry about? There is a number of areas, uh, and as, as we all know, uh, every challenge uh, comes with an opportunity. Uh, and obviously, uh, the overall digitalization, the, the distributed um, energy resources um, are, are creating some challenges in, in the industry, also in terms of uh, potential disruption, and we see some of that happening. Uh, and there is a number of utilities that are reacting in that uh, in, in that space uh, by first of all trying to uh, learn how to best uh, support uh, their customers and engaging with technology provider like us uh, to uh, look at what is the, uh, the next step in terms of technology to support those, uh, those, uh, those challenges. The, um, the challenge is on, on both sides, it's on the distribution um, but it's also on the, on the transmission aspect and, and as I mentioned before uh, I think the the single um, largest uh, transformation that we need to go through is really uh, digitalizing the grid. And uh, not only at the control room, but also out there in the field. Um, there, all the assets uh, today um, in, um, in a transmission substation or distribution substations can be digitalized uh, if they're not capable today of transmitting uh, data, they can be um, uh, upgraded uh, with uh, sensors, digital sensors, that can then transmit data uh, uh, via fiber optics or even wireless, and uh, collect then all the data in a control center, be it in the, in the local substations or in a control room in a, um, on a network control center, and then from there leverage uh, data analytics, uh, leverage uh, infrastructure in the cloud, to be able to uh, uh, take the value out of this data and make sure that we optimize uh, the operation, the maintenance, and as I mentioned before, uh, also important, the overall planning improvement of those, of those assets. When you look at the grid uh, on the whole, uh, which link in the chain do you find the weakest right now? Uh, which area you feel needs the most upgradation, uh, where you feel the technology is not being used as it should be used? I would say, maybe I take it from a, a bit a different angle. Uh, from a technology point of view, um, I think uh, there is still a, a lot of uh, 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 work to be done, but uh, I don't see that as the bottleneck or the weak link. Technology is there. Uh, what we are doing with customers is also sharing our roadmap on where we uh, see uh, that uh, we want to invest for the future of, uh, of the grids. Uh, and we get then important feedback from them to understand whether we are on the right track. Um, I think the, the weak uh, part of it is, first of all, we need much more collaboration across the industry. Uh, that is something that we see as a, as a key enabler to uh, make all this uh, work at the right speed and with the right, uh, uh, with the right uh, approach. Uh, and when I talk about collaboration, it's not just between the technology providers and, and, and uh, utility, uh, but also um, uh, regulatory bodies, uh, government. Uh, the overall regulatory environment is crucial to uh, support the evolution of, uh, of this grid. And one important thing is uh, also sharing with them um, our roadmap in terms of technology, where we are taking the technology for the next uh, five to ten years. Uh, it's uh, crucial for them then to design those uh, regulations uh, uh, aligned with what the technology can deliver. So the collaboration aspect the regulatory environment uh, is definitely one area where we all can uh, improve. So Claudio, what will be ABB's big focus areas over the next two to three years? From a power grid's uh, standpoint, uh, it's certainly making sure that we stay close with uh, our customers because in, a, in times of uh, transformation and, and, and changes, uh, the most important part is that we align and that we uh, are 
in touch with uh, the needs of our customers, of our stakeholders on, I would say, daily basis. Things are changing much faster today than it used to be in the past. And that is happening uh, across. It's really a global trend, what we see. It's, uh, it's happening in, in India as much as it's happening in, in, uh, in all other parts of the world. Uh, we are present uh, globally in all key markets, uh, not only with uh, sales uh, forces, but also with uh, service, with engineering centers. And that allow us to uh, understand uh, much better and much faster the, the customer needs. That's one, uh, that's one key area that, that we're focusing on. The overall uh, install base, which is a great asset that we have um, in, our, in our business, that's something that we want to leverage uh, even more going forward. And again, the collaboration with, uh, with our customers, leveraging uh, software platforms that we have today. Everything that we do under ABB Ability, for instance, is allowing us to leverage uh, data from the installed base and uh, leveraging infrastructure in the cloud. We have a, a partnership with Microsoft uh, uh, where basically everything that we have out there in the field can be put in the cloud and, and use that data uh, and, and combine it with third-party data and understand better how we can support the optimization process in, uh, in, uh, in, those, uh, in those assets. Um, last but not least is uh, we've been for a century, over a century, a technology pioneer, and we want to maintain that. Our efforts are really being close to customers, understanding where do we need to uh, put our efforts in terms of uh, technology, and driving that uh, being at the far front, uh, as we've been doing in, in many areas, such as HVDC, fax, and uh, digital. So how has your experience been in India so far? It's, um, you know, India, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing place. Um, talking about transformation, uh, if you look at a country that is really transforming, uh, at least in, uh, in my view, that's definitely India. Uh, there is a lot to do, of course, uh, still, but in terms of uh, infrastructure I've seen in the last uh, 10 years uh, 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 a tremendous amount of, uh, of progress and uh, as it happens in many in many in many uh, um, countries uh, because of the technology particularly on the digital there is a lot of leapfrogging and that I see is happening also here in this uh, in this country more specifically from a power grids point of view for us it's an amazing place it's a fantastic market it's very competitive, uh, we all know that, but it's, um, it's a great place to be because it has all the key ingredients uh, of um, the transformation of the grid, uh, starting from uh, investing in renewables, uh, which is going at a real fast pace here in, uh, in, uh, in India, and we're present there not just from a grid point of view, but uh, 40 to 50 percent of the of the solar inverters in, in, in India are provided by by ABB, uh, so we're really strong supporting that that aspect. The overall um, urbanization, uh, the plan that the government has with the smart cities, it's uh, I think it's a fantastic uh, example. Uh, it will create uh, very strong efficiencies and, and productivity out there, also in terms of uh, investments, um, and then. The overall transmission infrastructure. Um, the, the we have HVDC. Uh, we have the single uh, largest multi-terminal HVDC uh, in under under finalization now, Northeast Agra, which is uh, one of a kind. Um, and uh, facts, uh, Statcom, the overall digitalization of the substation is at the very center of, of uh, what also um, customers want to see as, as a next step. So all the ingredients are, are right here in, in, in this market. Okay. So what would be your um, outlook for the power sector globally as well as for India? The, um, well, we, know, we all know that on, on, on the short term, uh, as there is a bit of uncertainty out there from a macro perspective, uh, uh, some challenges in, in uh, some uh, uh, countries in terms of social and, and political instability, which obviously uh, does not help uh, the overall uh, um, investment environment. So um, on the short term, a bit of a mixed bag. But if you look at the longer term, the, uh, all the key growth drivers for 
uh, the power sector are intact. First of all, the uh, continuation of the renewable, uh, and that's a trend that we see is not a regional trend or, or, or a specific country, it's really a global trend. Uh, different countries are at different level of maturities, but they're all going in the same direction, want to leverage renewables uh, more going forward. And the uh, increase of uh, electricity as a, as a as a main source of, uh, of energy together with urbanization, together with uh, electrification of uh, consumption in, in different areas, is, is uh, those are trends that will require uh, investments uh, in, in, the, in the power space um, on the medium to long term, and we see that as a great opportunity for us to continue support. And, and how do you look at uh, Indian power sector going forward? The Indian power sector represents, in my view, what is, in all aspects, what is also going on on a global perspective. Uh, uh, as I mentioned before, it's a competitive environment, but uh, they're very open to uh, technology, to innovation. Um, they are fast adopters, and uh, I think that's a, an excellent place for us to be and making sure that with, uh, uh, you know, from an ABB standpoint, we have over 10,000 people here, and. Uh, 40% of that footprint is in, in power grids. And we have all the competence represented here in, um, in, in India, from uh, the digital uh, substations all the way up to the HVDC. This is the only uh, center um, outside uh, Sweden where we actually generate uh, also not only engineering, but also R&D for, for HVDC. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's one of the, the markets that uh, uh, you know, allow us also to see what is the next step in terms of technology, how do we push it to the next, uh, to the next level. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Claudio. Uh, thank you for giving us your time. Sure. And uh, we hope to see you again soon. Sure. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.